Knocks it through. Mullen bursting into the box. Josh Mullen. Mullen's ball across. It's turned in. It's Pittman who's got it. Livingston leads. Now can they get the ball back in? O'Brien. The lead. And Livingston have the lead. Mum, the score. The full-time whistle blows and David Hay celebrates and the Livingston fans join in exultation. Livingston have the lead against Rangers and they are certainly rising to a few occasions on their return to the top flight in Scotland. This week on Talk Livy, I'm delighted to welcome Livy's answer to David Beckham, Josh Mullen. Josh, how are you doing? I'm all good, mate. Thank you. Yourself? I'm not too bad, thanks. It was a good result the other night and another wee assist for yourself. Yeah, mate. Um, it, was a, it was a great result, like you said. Uh, I think it, I heard David saying it was that wee bit special because we've not obviously beat Aberdeen in, in 17 years. Um, and since we've been back in the, the top fight, they were the only team that we hadn't we hadn't beat, so to go to Pitodre, um and beat them 2-0 was, was very pleasing. Uh, also, the kind of the changes that were made, and everybody knows that Big John pulled out 10 minutes before and, and Sinky stepped in, so there was a bit of, there was a bit of um, commotion before the game, but everybody dealt with it well, and uh, it was a massive result on the night. Sure, and all these boys getting injured on those grass pitches, man, and everyone makes a big deal about the plastic one. Terrible, mate, terrible. <laughs> Uh, now, we have something that needs cleared up here on the podcast now. Andy Semple, who's one of my co-hosts, uh, likes to proclaim that you two are friends. Can I confirm that this is true or if it is just a figment of his imagination? Who's that, mate? Sorry? Andy Semple. Andrew Semple. Uh, mm, have you got a picture of him that? I'm not sure, mate. I, uh, mate, sure I can't get one where he fits in the frame. It's difficult. Right? Uh, um, Andy Semple, did you say? Aye. Aye, he nah, says that you two DM each other back and forth all the time, and you know, nah, that no happen, nah. Second name Sempo. Yeah, Sempo. No, mate, nah, not a clue. Right, well, I'm glad we've cleared that up, and we can now finally put that over again. <laughs> um, so let's nah, get I'm started. Joking. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. Gonna do it, mate. Sorry, I couldn't do it. <laughs> Now let's get started. With, <laughs> let's get started with how you got into football. I believe you were involved in a few pro youth setups uh, growing up. Kind of, I think Celtic Rangers, Falkirk, Airdrie were some of the ones I saw last week. Yeah, mate. Um, that's correct. Uh, the last one I was at was was um, Falkirk, uh, and that's when I decided to kind of just call it a day. It's funny you say that because someone actually messaged me the other day, um, asking me to pass on a bit of advice to the their younger brother who's kind of in about the youth setups and now and he's fell away with the lockdown and stuff um he's a wee bit he's a wee bit devastated thinking that i think he's only 16 he's saying like oh nothing nothing's going to nothing's going to happen kind of football's over but for me like like i said i was i was um boys club and then i went uh through the pro youth setups and to be honest like it was pro youth setups for me that i don't think they're, they're a good place to be is a as a young kid, that's just my personal experience. Um, the experiences that I had, uh, obviously, like I said, I kind of, I felt like I needed to take a step away from it. A lot of the boys that I was playing with, just my personal opinion, maybe thought that they were, they'd already made it, if that makes sense. Nice. Um, there was a few boys that, that don't get me wrong, that were excellent footballers, but they were in about the first team when I was there, and I was thinking, I wish I was these guys. Um, I wasn't, but now some of them are, some of them are not playing football at all. Um, and I was looking at them at the time thinking, wow, like they have made it. But nah, I took a I took a step away from from football altogether. Um and then went back and, and played with my mates and it was the best thing I ever done. I certainly believe anyway. I always say I would I would never change it. Yeah, well, as you say, it didn't quite work out for you in those kind of setups and you went and played in the juniors as well with, with Pollock and Coburn Laidside. 
how much do you feel that helped your development, taking that kind of step back and, as you say, almost playing for a bit of enjoyment? Massive, uh uh-huh. um, The company said that I, I went there, they had some top-class players. There was guys there that were definitely capable of still playing um, at a higher level. The likes of Kev McDonald that was at Motherwell um, had played in Europe. Dave McGowan, Sean Dillon, John Dillon. So I was getting to a really experienced um, junior team, so to speak. Uh, and I loved every minute of playing and it was more more playing with, playing with men and playing real football um, and it's when I went back to Coburn it was like, uh-huh, like I'm enjoying this again I love this like, and speaking to them as well and their experiences that, that made me want to kick on so I enjoyed every minute of it like I said I wouldn't change it Do you think enough people take that step back you know there's obvious examples like yourself at Livy and Pitts as well who was at Hamilton and kind of dropped down to the junior ranks as well and You've got the likes of Andy Robertson down south. Do you think enough players go, you know what, maybe this isn't the thing, or go play part-time, go down the ranks and work their way back up? Do you know something? I personally, I don't I don't think there is. Um, I can't. There's not really anybody that I can, that I can vouch for, I think, nowadays. Um, and like I said, these are all just my personal personal opinions. I'm no, I'm no world beater of that. This is just obviously how I've done it and, and I enjoy doing it. But I think these days there's maybe... A lot of boys that are not really getting a chance, but they're happy enough to stay at a full-time setup or, or stuff like that. They don't want to go out and kind of, like you say, go down the leagues and, and experience playing proper football every week. Um, I think when it comes to it, push comes to shove and it comes to the end of contracts and stuff, um, they kind of overlook part-time football and, and just chuck it all together and, and go and get a job or stuff like that. So I, I personally don't think there is enough um, boys that, maybe aren't getting the opportunity that want to drop down and drop down and really, really find out what football is all about. Because like I said, I think that was the platform for everything that I've kind of I've kind of done today. Yeah, well, it certainly worked out for you because you got picked up by Albion Rovers who were then in League Two. How did that move all kind of come about for you? Um, it was it was um, Branco at the time, funny enough. Um, Branco is in Albion Rovers. He's from, he's from my area. Um, and they'd contacted Cook Burnley to to take me. Um, I think they wanted me in, in the the January window. Uh, it right. never quite happened. I went in, I went in the seen the seen the setup and stuff, and I always remember like um, it was when they'd got Rangers in the cup. Uh, they drew them at Ibrooks. One each, they invited me along to the game and stuff. Um, I think they'd obviously made a wee bit of money off a. Of, off of the Rangers game and were signing a few boys because uh, again that was another great squad that I'd been into uh, so they just invited me, invited me along and it's weird like <laughs> I always say this to people like people make wee jokes and wind up wind ups and say like oh you've gone to Clifton Hill on a Saturday and stuff but I genuinely loved it there eh? like I loved it so when I went from Coburnie to see Albion Rovers just a stadium League 2 like I was buzzing again so um that's how it came about. It was Branco that kind of, he wanted to get in. It never happened till the end of the season, but uh, I was delighted with it. Yeah, and as you say, you made your debut and uh, I think it was Darren Young that had just been appointed manager Darren at that Young, point. Yeah. Um, and a Challenge Cup tie against Airdrie. So, derby game, bit of a baptism of fire for you? Yeah, um, I was a wee bit nervous uh, because, like I said, um, John Ward, uh, Branco, they had kind of, been released to their duties um, and Dan came in so I hadn't Dan hadn't obviously signed me or that I didn't know who I was um, he knows now right enough so I think I still speak to him um, every week yeah, I'm good mates to him with a few nights out and that there's a gaffer as well um, so I was a wee bit nervous to be honest uh, not knowing what was going to happen but he phoned me and said look like you signed your you're part of the plans part of the squad um, etc so I had that Dan was the manager from from my first season there, um, and we won League Two that year. So it was it was everything that kind of I hoped it could be. Yeah, well, as you say, you you went on to win the League Two title that year. Did uh, did you imagine achieving that in your your first season in kind of professional football? No, I never. To be honest, um, because I, like I said, there was, I went in a very good squad. Um, the boy John Gemmel was there. Uh, he'd played lower league for obviously uh, a number of years he'd scored I think he'd scored over 100 goals or something in like senior football and I remember when we won he said to me he's like look I'm coming to the end of my career I think he was like 30 30 something 
he said to me, he's like, look, you don't win like um, trophies very often. He said, it doesn't matter what league it is. He said, like, enjoy every minute of it. So I always remember that sticking with me. Um, I never thought I'd win it uh, in the first year of asking, but obviously we did. So it was it was unbelievable. In January of 2015, obviously, your, your former Albion Rovers uh, caught the eye of Livy and it was Davy Hopkins that was manager at the time, brought you in for an undisclosed fee. Was there any in, other interest in your signature or was it always kind of Livy were the team kind of looking to bring you in? No, there was. Um, it was Livingston and Hamilton at the time. Um, and this is, this again, like this is just another wee bit of, a wee bit of honesty. Um, it was basically similar similar deals that were on the table um, and I just thought at the time Livingston was the, the team that I would get more opportunities at um, after speaking to, to both managers so that's that's the reason why I'd chosen um, Livingston at the time Yeah, and we were obviously struggling when you came in as well Did the fact that there was a wee I can, albeit a probably nominal fee but there was a fee involved did that feel like a wee bit more pressure on you when you came in? I think I think it gave me confidence to be honest. Um, I think I came in quite confident. Uh, I always remember that my first game was Hibs. Uh, it was a quarter past five kickoff on Alba on Saturday night, uh, and I started. So I think I played, in my personal opinion, I played well. Um, I think I lasted like eighty minutes. So. I must have played well because if you're not playing well, you don't last eighty minutes with <laughs> David Martindale. So, I, I, honestly, I feel like I feel like I done I done well. Started a couple of games after that, but like you said, we we had started to to lose some games, and I think at that time it was it was more going with experience boys and trying to get trying to get results. So, I don't feel like there was that much that much pressure because it was a fee, you know. Um, like I said, I came in and started straight away, so. I was kind of easy. It probably gave me a wee bit more confidence, to be honest. Made you feel wanted, doesn't it? Uh huh. Exactly. Uh huh. That's exactly what it was. Uh huh. And obviously, you were making that step up from from part time football to full time football uh, for the first time. Did you notice a a big difference in that? Um, I definitely noticed a difference. I don't think it was was massive. If I'm being if I'm being totally honest, um, it was just obviously the quality. The quality goes up, but. In terms of um, from the championship to to League Two, even League One, like it's, it's Scottish football, it's um, it's played at a it's played at a high tempo. Um, the, I was quite lucky where I, fitness is probably one of my biggest attributes, if I'm being honest. Uh, so I was always kind of fit. Uh, I feel like I slotted into that quite well. Whereas maybe down leagues, that maybe your fitness is only lasting seventy odd minutes or so. Whereas I probably could keep up to ninety minutes. So um, I felt that I adapted to it quite quick, to be honest. And obviously it didn't prove to be a, a great end to the season, getting relegated through the playoffs with Stranra. How was the contrast from the previous summer? You'd won, you'd won League 2 Albion Rovers to then that kind of low the following summer. It was, like, it was horrible. Like I say this to everybody. Like, nobody obviously wants a, a relegation on their, on their CV. It's, especially for me, I think it was more the fact that in my head I'm thinking... I chose, I chose Livy um, over Hamilton. We've just been relegated to, to League One. I was unsure if the club were going to stay, um, were going to stay full time. Like all these kind of things go through your head, but uh, we we did. We stayed full time and we went back up in the in the first season um, of Asking. And as crazy as it sounds, it's probably the best thing that happened to me and happened to Livingston. Um, I, yeah. Again, I played I played more games in League One. Um, it gave Livingston a chance to a chance to rebuild. And if we're being honest, like you look back the years, like since the relegation, I don't think they've ever looked back. To be honest, everything's just been strength to strength. So it what obviously at, at the time it was devastating. Like didn't want to speak to anybody. Like and that's me being genuinely serious. Like didn't want to speak to anybody. Wasn't sure what was going to happen. I just obviously made this made this big change and I thought it's only lasted um, four or five months but I genuinely think it was the best thing that happened for myself and for the club. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I remember going to a fans forum um, just before the start of the new season and Hoppy saying, judge me on this team, you know, not last season uh -huh. type thing and it was that kind of rebuild, wasn't it? And he brought in his own uh -huh. players and Definitely. what a, what a turnaround, eh? What a, uh -huh. Like you said, even like I remember the 
the squad we had in League One, it was a it was a great squad, but the the bunch of boys was was incredible. Like genuinely and genuinely incredible. Like um I think you've seen that in the championship as well. We obviously a couple of boys had left, but we added some boys and like it was an unbelievable bunch of boys that you there's no it was no surprise to I think us in the change room how we won that league at the at the first season of Askin because if we're being honest, I don't think anybody expected us to to win it. Because you know, like you've seen teams get relegated in the struggle, um, but we knew like the squad we had, like it, it wasn't even the squad to be honest. It was just a group of boys, like so. That's what gave us massive, massive confidence. Was that was there a game in the season that you remember that was the uh, the real kind of turning point where you thought, right, we are going to kind of propel now and we're we're going to see out the league? I think it was probably Alo away. We knew that was our biggest our biggest test because Alo are Alo are excellent in League One. Um, I remember we went away to them. Uh, it must have been but Christmas time. I remember Mikey Miller scored an absolute screamer. Ah. Um, if you're asking me to tell you the score, I, I, is it was it three 0 maybe? Three one, three one. I three uh, one. Uh, I remember Mikey uh, Miller's uh, goal. Oh, absolute peach. Uh -huh. I think I think it was that game probably um, that we went because they were they were probably pushing us. Uh, so I think that game gave us real confidence, and that's when I thought, Do you know what, oh. I like. We will we will kick on here, um, and we'll see it over the line, and and obviously that's what happened. Yeah, and obviously you talked about the the team spirit, and we went on to to win week one that season. Start the following campaign, we're in the championship. Did was there ever any talk about pushing for the playoffs at all, or was it always kind of? I remember Hoppy every week coming out saying eighth place, eighth place, eighth place. Do you know what? Like, and this is this is like no word to lie. Like, I I genuinely think and believe that it was just survival. Like, survival was all we were looking for. Um, and again, this is a bit honestly. Like, David probably doesn't even know this, but there was times after training on a Friday, and if we were walking back round, like we were thinking to ourselves, like, like another game tomorrow. Like, if we win, like that's incredible. Like, I think that's why we've done so well because. We, even though we were winning games, we would never we never got ahead of ourselves. Like I think we always kind of thought like, oh, if this run's going to come to an end at some point. Nice. Um, I think that I honestly think that's how we've done so well. And and when people were asking like, is your like, or oh, what's the aim now? Like top four playoffs and that. Even if we're round about it, I don't think it was maybe until the last couple of months where we actually started to say to ourselves, right, if we're being serious, like we need to make the playoffs now. Like we've we've stayed here this long. Like we need to. But like that's the God's honest truth. Even like halfway through the season, everything for us was still just survival. Yeah, we we managed to finish second in the league, and we went into what is probably your crowning glory as your highlight in a lovely jersey. Um, the first leg of the playoffs up at Tannadice. Um, what was the mood like in the dressing room going into that game? Obviously, we found out just before that Ryan Hardy was going to be out, for example. Um, were the players confident going up to Tannadice that night? I think by the time the playoffs came, like everybody was buzzing and believed we could win. And this this is another one, obviously, like just a wee bit honesty, like we we wanted to finish second, um, for the for the reason that you get you get an extra, I think it's like ten days off before before your game. Um yeah. so we we made a massive push towards the end to finish finish second. We put everything into getting that second spot. Um and also third and fourth was Dundee United. And Dunfermline. So, if we're being totally honest, then we wanted Dundee United because Dunfermline were always excellent against us. Uh, um, always excellent. So, we were we were delighted when it was. I know that sounds a bit bad saying it, but we were delighted when we got um, Dundee United. So, I think I think we were definitely confident going into that game, and and we'd done well against them throughout the season. Um, so we would have definitely put Dundee United over Dunfermline and. Obviously, that's what happened. We, we got Dundee United. Yeah, and I think it's just safe to say every Livy fan has that probably in the top couple of games ever as a Livingston supporter. You grabbed the the all important second goal to get us level at two each on the night. Um, I take it you've watched that one a few times, Josh. Definitely, and I'm not even lying when I say this. Like, it's I scored a lot better goals than that. Like, but for me, that goal's um, up there. I'm not just saying that because I'm I'm speaking to you, like. If you check any interview I've done, like even I was at Ross County and stuff, like I still say that's that's up there for me. Like Tanadice and the lights, because let's not kid ourselves on. Dundee United are a massive club. Like 
it was on BT that night. It was um the stadium was packed. So for me it was up there like my missus and now like I still show her on YouTube and stuff and we watch the highlights. I think there's like a twenty twenty minute highlight on YouTube. We still watch it. Um so no, like you said, uh -huh, it's for me it's definitely up there. I've got fond memories of that goal as well because I've still got half a seat from celebrating the goal um, when you equalised <laughs> as well. Um, now, we managed to see that game out, uh, win the game 3-2 and obviously the, the home leg drew one each. The, pl the players must have been flying going into the game against Partick Thistle. Uh -huh, I, think, I think they were because, um, like I said, we we had been winning games of football. Partick had been losing. Um, so when we played them, we played them at home. Uh, and obviously we won that game. I was I was very surprised the second leg. I thought, do you know what? This is where we might struggle. Like going to uh, for how it's a big pitch. Like you're going for everything at us. But it generally couldn't have been the opposite. Like I felt like we controlled that game as well. And then obviously Keys got the Keys got the goal, and it, it felt so comfortable. Um, so I uh, I think honestly, God, I think the boys were excellent over the over the two legs and. And they deserved it. Like let's let's be honest, they deserved it. And did we played them first game of that season in the League Cup? Did did you take any confidence? You know, we drew with them at home, but beat them on penalties. But did you take any confidence from that performance against them? Uh huh. Um, so like you said, we went into that game knowing that we'd already played them. They hadn't beat us. Um, we had obviously, like you said, got the result in penalties. So we knew that we knew that we could definitely match them. Um and like you said, like we were we were on a high, they were probably on a low going into the playoffs. Like it was probably the same as us when we played Shun Ra. Shun Ra went in the high, um, and we went in the in a low. And we knew that we had to be at our best to to beat them because they had nothing to lose, so to speak. And I think that's the way we probably looked at it. Like like I said, like talking to you, like our aim was never was never to get promotion. Like if we're being totally honest, we just wanted to stay in the league. So we were going into that game with with, with loads of confidence. And uh, it was safe to say it was some night after uh, once we kind of got the job done at Fur Hill, 3-1 in aggregate. Uh, you were the choir master that night, standing on the tables, banging the ceiling <laughs> whilst watching the sports scene highlights. Has, has your hand ever recovered from that? <laughs> Every time I watch that video, my hand gets sore and sore. I think that's why I've got a problem with it. But no, like you said, like, and I always go back to um, John Gemmo saying to me, like, uh, like this doesn't happen very often. Uh, enjoy it because obviously, like I said, he only got one out of his full career. So um, every time it's happened to me, like like you said, I was the I was the front runner in the in the choir. So I had to lead the party and, and made sure I enjoyed every minute of it. Quite right as well. And obviously, you then decided to make the move up north to Ross County. Um, what what was the thinking behind that move? Uh, was there was there an offer on the table to stay at Levy going into the top flight? Uh -huh. um, there was a there was an offer there, and, and I'm not just saying that. You could ask Davey, um, he'll tell you, he'll tell you the exact same. There was an offer there. Uh, there was a, a couple other offers from um, from SPL clubs as well. Again, ask Davey, he'll tell you. I, it's no secret that I'm I'm really good friends with Davey, um, and nobody probably knows this, but even when I went to Ross County and I spoke to Davey and I I kind of told him the situation, like. The, the the two is agreed that it was it was something that I couldn't that I couldn't say no to. Um, I knew it was going to be a massive gamble, but I sat and I and I, I thought about it and I looked at Ross County's squad and I'd seen obviously the facilities stuff like that. Um, and I knew what the I knew what the plans were and, and I, I knew they were serious because the boys that they were keeping, um, that it wasn't it wasn't a massive clear out a panic anything like that. So. I knew it'd be a gamble, especially we'd done the United and stuff still in the league. Um, but I think if I'm being honest, at the time, it's probably the best thing I've ever done. Um, I've I've not said that much, but I look back now, um, the kind of player that I went to Ross County, um, and the player that I've come back to, to Livingston, I think it's I think it's worked out well for for me and and Livingston. Yeah, so you think that move worked out best because you think you you think you've improved as a player as well then. Definitely, uh -huh. um, and I'm not saying that I wouldn't have proved at Livingston because, uh, obviously, like you said, when I when I came in the first time, it was David that brought me from Albion Rovers. Um, so, but I I genuinely feel I, I don't even know if it's as, as a player as well. I think it was just growing up because I'd stayed at home. Um, 
all the time being a wee bit being a wee bit spoiled and that. So I had to I also I had to pack up and go up there, get my own house and up there for two and a half year. Um and it matured me. Um as a as a um as a person and a player, definitely that's what I believe anyway. Uh, I think I'm I'm getting the rewards for it now. And it was certainly a successful stint up at Ross County. You, you went on to win the championship at the first attempt and you also scored a couple of important goals in the Challenge Cup final as well to do the double. Now, here's a difficult one for you. Was it better winning the championship with the league title or was it better going up through the playoffs? It, it honestly doesn't matter what way you get promotion. The only benefit of winning it outright is... Like, like, let's be honest. Your champions, you get the trophy, you get the, you get the, um, you get your medal, everything like that. But see the emotions that you go into the playoffs, like that is, it's a totally different feeling. Like I don't think you can honestly compare the two of them. Like the two of them are unbelievable, and it's, it's different pressure. See when you're at the top of the the top of the table, um, and you're going to try and win it, and obviously Dundee United were barking at our heels a wee bit in the end with. We kind of we'd won it with a good few points, but it's a totally different, it's a totally different feeling, like different pressure. Um, and I've I've always said this to the boys, like there's no there's no feeling that can describe. I think it was more more the fact, like I've said to you loads of times, there was no expectations for us to go up um, from Livingston. There was no expectations for us to go up, and we've done it, and we've done it through the playoffs. Um, and every, it's no secret that your season's an extra what, three, three and a half weeks longer. So by the time that comes, you're deflated and you just let everything out. Like, the emotions are incredible. Um, so I don't honestly don't think you can compare the two of them. But like you say, you'll, you'll take it either way. What way you got, you're, you're not caring. I, I, I agree with you on the, the nerves and the pressure sort of thing. I don't think I've ever been as nervous as a football fan watching the playoff games. Uh-huh. Like, genuinely, like, I'm, and like you said, because we're on the other podcast, I'm, I'm not just saying that. Like, there's no... It's probably because you're you're not expecting um, to really go up, but then by the time the playoffs comes and you've you've got the build up um, and let's be honest, like all the leagues and stuff are done, so everybody's tuned into your game, like, and you start to believe that uh, like you can you can do it, and then you start to get the results in one game, and then the next game, and before you know it, you've got two games to go, and you could obviously be getting promoted, so. The emotions of that are, are incredible. Um, and it's obviously, like I say, I still talk about that goal uh, in the playoffs to this day. So I'll keep the memories forever. And obviously, after promotion with Ross County, you helped them uh, secure their top flight status last year, but started featuring a wee bit less coming into this season and the opportunity came to come back down the road to Livy. Um, how did that all materialise then? It's a tough one, to be honest, because with the... With, I think it was more due to the COVID. Um, if I'm being totally honest, it was more due to the COVID because there was talk of me signing a, a new contract at Ross County. And then when the COVID stuff happened, obviously it was we, nobody was sure what was going to happen. So when we when I came down the road, I was only down for like maybe three, four days. And then I had my own place up there. So I made the mistake, obviously, heading back up, me and my missus, and it, we fought two or three weeks. But before you know it, it was three, four months. So we'd been up there and genuinely, like, we never came down once, eh? Um, ah. We never came down once and I, I stayed up there. So by the time I, the, by the time I went back to training and stuff, it was just a totally different, totally different environment um, that I was in. And to be honest, it, it, a few things happened. Like I said, there was a new contract there. Um, I never signed it, uh, stuff like that. So a few things started to unfold and it was just, it was... It was probably the right time. But like I've said, and I've said this to you also, Davey and stuff, I, I genuinely think if it wasn't for COVID, then I'd probably still I'd probably still be up there. But obviously the way the way it's going now, I've I've certainly not looked back. Yeah, and as you say, I take it that relationship that you have with Davey was a big draw in coming back down the road as well. Massive, uh-huh, massive. Um as soon as as soon as Davey found out, um it was it was straight on the phone. Uh, like I said, I still spoke to him and we came down to play to play Livingston. Davy said to me, obviously he'd asked me, he's like oh, how I wasn't playing, stuff like that. Um so as soon as it, the the news broke, that was kinda looked like I was going to be leaving. Um Davy was it was on the phone. He was on the phone like it happened, it was going about for a while. Um and Davy had spoke to me. I said, Look, 
honestly, I don't, I don't know what's happening where my head's at. Um, and then I came down the road one day, spoke to Davy, and it can be, it can be very persuasive, like I, like I said to a few people. But nah, uh, Davy's a great guy, so I went in and seen him, and, and like I said, I've no looked back since. Tell you, there was one person that must have been delighted to see you come through the door, and it was Scott Pittman because you gate crashed his uh, contract <laughs> extension video uh, for social media. He must have been <laughs> absolutely delighted when you came through. I think he was buzzing at her. Um, he's he obviously Davy said it as well a few weeks ago. Like Pitts hates the camera, he hates speaking. He just goes about his business. Um, he's one of the he's honestly one of the nicest guys I've ever met. Um, he deserves everything he gets in football. Such a hard worker down to earth boy. Uh, so he was he was buzzing to see me for, for obviously two reasons that he never he never knew and hadn't seen me and the fact that he'd get to spend less time doing interviews. So. He was, we, had, we had to take it a couple of times because he literally sat down and said, or oh, there's Josh and sat back up. And he's like, no, that's not it works. You need to say what you're doing, stuff like that. So, uh, Pitts is a great boy. Right. And um, it's certainly not been dull since you arrived back down the road. We've had um, manager depart and Gary Hall, an incredible 14-game unbeaten run, including reaching the League Cup final. You also made your 100th appearance for the club as well. And amongst all that, and Davy's appointment, there must be an incredible buzz about the place just now. It is, uh huh. Um, just where the club's been and and where it's at now. Like I said, when you think back to when we were in the championship and we talk about getting promotion, like our aim was to stay, was to stay in the league. But now, like we're in a fourteen game unbeaten run and we're going into games believing every game that we're that we're going to win. It might sound crazy, but and I said this to my mate as well. Like I, we never want to get ahead of ourselves. Or, start to think that we're better than what we are. But if we're being realistic, we're in a 14-game unbeaten run. I think it's like 10 clean sheets now. Like, you need to be confident getting into games of football. Um, and I don't even think it's confident as in that we're going to win. I think we're just confident in what we're doing in the pitch. Like, we're confident in our work rate. Like, we're confident in the guys next to us um, who we're on the pitch with, the guys that are on the bench, even the boys that are in the stand. Because, uh, like I said, Big Sinky was, was in the stand the last few weeks. He get drafted in and then 10 minutes before get drafted into play and you see the, the performance that he came in and put in like it was absolutely unbelievable so I think that's what it is we're just we're just confident in our in our group um, and I think you're seeing that in the, the performances everybody grafting for each other Yeah it's been a real squad effort hasn't it As obviously touched on Sinky and the likes of Steve Lawson Jacko came in as well the other night and uh -huh. you know had a really good game Obviously, you've been away from the club for a couple of years. Have you noticed a big difference in kind of behind the scenes at the club since you were kind of there, League One, to them being a Premiership club? Oh, massive, uh -huh, massive. That's even in League One, like Livingston were always a club that wanted to do it right, try to do it right. Anything you need, you got. Like you go right back to like um, Cheb, Andy, Colin. Like Cheb is Cheb's a kit man, but I'm no joking when I say like it does. He's the life and soul of the club, eh? Like, he does everything for you. Like, so even to see, like, the buzz that he gets out of seeing boys doing well, like, it's an unbelievable club to be at. But behind the scenes, like, they make sure everything's there for you. Anything, like, you need, it's there. Um, and like I said, going back to just even being, like, being a kit man, like, he wants you to feel good, eh? Like, he wants you to feel good. Like, he says, like, oh, feel good, play good. Like, you're well looked after um, behind the scenes, like, even like the new gym, the media room, stuff like that, it just makes it it lifts the full place and um, just brightens it right up. So, I, that was that was probably the main reason I went back. Um, I felt like I was going back to a Premiership club. And obviously, you've touched on the the team spirit from kind of League One, the, the Championship playoff season as well. Is that still evident at the club now, even though you've been away for a couple of years? Uh huh, massive. Um, it's just like I said, it's it's everybody working for each other. There's no negativity, nothing like the big one for me is, and I've said this to the parents stuff, like we're winning games of football, like it's not very often you, you see teams winning games of football and making three, four changes every game. And that's what we're doing. So when somebody comes out of the team, they're not taking the half because they know they're going to get a chance again or they'll be back in the following week or there's a reason behind it. So nobody's nobody's kind of spitting the dummy nothing like that the, the group of boys that we've got is honestly unbelievable and like you said there's been a there's been a few changes um foxes came in 
Um, he's obviously in his, his assistant coach now. Guys like that who are really good, like have really good football experience, but are also really good guys as well, just add that little bit to the club. Um, which, they, like I said, does does everything there for us. So just adding the people to that, it, it helps massively. And obviously, we'll, we'll talk about the elephant in the room, which is the, the League Cup final coming up at the end of the month. Uh, has uh, the intensity in training <laughs> racked up a little bit? With that on the horizon, is David need to keep players' feet on the ground as well with that coming up? <laughs> to be honest, like we we've honestly no no trained much, eh? Like because we've been like we've been constantly with games. I think Wednesday Wednesday after Aberdeen was our first day off since. Honestly, honestly, can tell you we've been we've genuinely been in seven days a week. Um, but. A lot of that's been recovery sessions. And then after your recovery session, you've got another game. So it's a Friday session before a game where it's just obviously like a light session. So I can't remember the last time that we had a, a proper a proper like Tuesday session, so to speak, when you're off a Wednesday um, and you're going at it full tilt because, like I said, we've had, we've had games constantly. And obviously you'll you'll get the chance to, to line up at Hamden in the League Cup final, I take it. You're looking forward to that one then, Josh. Um obviously like you said, I would I would love the chance to to be in the lineup, um, just even be involved because like I said, we've got a we've got a big squad, massive squad, but everybody deserves to deserves to be in that squad. Um there's no there's no beating around the bush with that one. So if I'm also if I'm selected in that squad then then I'll be delighted. Um I feel like I've played a, a big part in um in the journey so far. So uh, I've got my fingers crossed that that continues. Josh, it goes without saying, thanks very much for, for taking the time this evening and having a wee chat with me and uh, all the boys at Total Levy wish you and the rest of the squad the, the best of luck for the season and the cup final coming up. Uh -huh. No, no, thanks at all. I appreciate that, mate, any time. Um, just give me a shout. I'm always up for a, always up for a chat. I appreciate it. Do that.